years the Temple Owls didn't make the NCAA tournament. This season, they're without the services of Lynn Greer, who graduated as the second all-time leading scorer in Temple history. Head coach John Chaney has put together one of the toughest non-conference schedules in recent memory. His young players face a huge challenge to achieve early season success. Today, the Owls face a tough Rutgers defense that Scarlet Knights head coach Gary Waters had promised to bring to his young team. Coming off a strong showing in the preseason NIT, Rutgers is still looking forward to being a serious contender in the Big East. than a month away and people are playing college basketball already started great to be back should be a great season we well, take a look at these two teams to start the season temple still has a lot of questions that have to be answered rutgers has already gotten some of those answers by playing in that preseason nit well they got two games they played very well especially defensively against columbia and played great for 34 minutes down at carolina had the game won but all of a sudden took bad shots some untimely turnovers ended up losing that game on the road by four points but they learned a lot about themselves especially Especially defensively, this is a team that can really put pressure on the basketball. Well, when you take a look at what they do, obviously defense is going to end up keying the offense, but offensively, they've got a number of talented players who can put the ball in the hoop. Well, and you start off right off the bat with Jerome Coleman. When you play Temple, you've got to make outside shots. You talk about a zone buster, none better in the East than Jerome Coleman. This is a guy with unlimited range. He lit it up last year, setting a Big East record for the most threes during Big East Conference play. see how he bounces back. You see his numbers. Their leading scorer last year and one of the best three-point shooters in the Big East Conference. Now, if you know anything about the Temple Owls, you know it's a team that's usually predicated on veteran leadership. They are starting three freshmen here on the floor today to begin their season, so that means somebody's got to step up. One of those guys who's going to do that has a little bit of a new look right now, and it's David Hawkins. Yeah, new look. He shaved his head all of a sudden, but it's going to be the same game. David Hawkins, an extremely explosive player. This is a star when you see Temple play, it looks like when they lose a star, somebody's ready to step up. This year, expect that to be David Hawkins. As we said, look at his numbers from last year. Over 15 points per game. He missed the first seven games. When he got back into the lineup, he got them playing well. As we said, a different kind of look for him, different kind of look for this Temple team. One thing that's been a constant, though, last nine times these teams have played, Temple has won eight of them. Another note, Rutgers, the first team ever to win a game here in this building back in 1997. When we come back, we'll have the starting lineups, of course, in dramatic fashion here at the Lake Corey Center. And the opening tip for this afternoon's game, the Rutgers Scarlet Knights and the Temple Owls kick off our season on CN8 in just a moment. National Anthem. 
performed by recording artist Aries here at the Leah Chorus Center in Philadelphia. And getting you ready for our college basketball season opener here on CNA. The Temple Owls and the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. John Chaney, the venerable head coach, the Hall of Fame head coach of the Temple Owls, beginning his 21st season at the helm here at Temple. And he has got quite the challenge this year in that he is dealing with young players, three of them in his starting lineup. And that is something that is very un-John Chaney-like. Certainly going to require some patience in terms of what's happening there. Gary Waters in his second season as the head coach. The Rutgers Scarlet Knights coming off a fine season last year. And as we said, an opportunity he had to potentially win two games in the preseason at IT. They beat Columbia. They had the ball game against North Carolina at the Dean Dome. Watched it slip away in the final seven and a half minutes of that ball game earlier this week. Rutgers lineups being introduced to the crowd here at the Leah Coors Center. Part of a double header. Women's and men's. The Temple women's team victorious in the first half of this double header. And there are the Owls prepared to be introduced to the crowd here at the Leah Coors Center. And we told you there's some drama on it. And they'll go at it right here. Let's take you over to the sideline now and check in with Mick Bonningoff. Mick. All right. Thanks very much, Scott Graham. As always the case here at the Leah Coors Center, the lights go dim and they get ready for their starting lineups. I will tell you, though, that there is one player that who is not going to be on the court today, and that is Brian Polk. The reason behind it is he is academically eligible. But head coach John Cheney, always a stickler for academics, knows that Polk has been struggling. So what he's going to do, even though he is eligible, he's going to hold him out for about the first six games this season. That way, hopefully, Polk gets his grades up over the holiday time, and that way when they come back in the second part, the next semester, Polk will be eligible and he can make more of a contribution. It only makes sense that he contribute down the stretch toward A-10 time, toward tournament time, as opposed to maybe being ready to go now and then not having the grades to compete in the second semester. So note that the Brian Polk will not be in the lineup here today. But like we said, several freshmen on the court, that's going to be one of the big factors that John Chaney has to work his way through when he hopes the guys like David Hawkins and also Alex Westby can be the leaders of this team and get his freshmen over the hump. Should be an interesting game because when you talked about it the other night, Rutgers had a big lead down in North Carolina and didn't get the job done down the stretch. We'll see if maybe Rutgers can pick it up here today. Scott? Well, thank you, Mick. And the lights come back on after the introduction of the starting lineups of the Temple Owls. The Owls get ready to go for a new season, and they have some high hopes in terms of preseason looks in the Atlantic 10 Conference. They are favored as the team to beat going into the season in the Atlantic 10 East. And why not? They seem to finish in first place every year, even when they struggled last year. They had that great stretch run after starting 6-12, and end up winning the A-10 East last year. And you see John Cheney. Prepared for another season. There are your starting lineups. Westby and Robinson, one of the freshmen in the lineup, along with freshman Keith Butler. Marty Collins also starting at guard. He'll play a lot of point guard. David Hawkins. Amizada and Shields are the forwards. Kareem Wright the starting center. And a very talented backcourt duo in Jerome Coleman and Mike Sherrod for the Rutgers Scarlet Knights. And you hit on it early, Scott. A very young team. First time ever for John Chaney to be starting three freshmen in his starting lineup. Now, of course, wasn't all that long ago in Pepe Sanchez's first year, as you look at the officials, that they started three first-year players, but that was not three freshmen. It was also three, as it turned out, very talented players that helped to carry that team for quite some time. Mazzana gets the tap, and Rutgers controls to begin the ball game. Scarlet Knights, a winner over Columbia. They lost to North Carolina 71 to 67 in that ball game on Wednesday night. Down at Chapel Hill. See Temple. Temple in their zone defense really extending out. They've got a Mark Coleman out of the zone defense. Also, Shields, a very good outside shooter as well. And from way outside, Coleman struggling with his first shot of the ball game. They'll hear about that one from the crowd. Well, Coleman, a guy who has a ton of confidence. He was two for 18 against North Carolina including some bad shots coming down the stretch, but this is a guy who will fire nonetheless. Now 
here is Collins. Maybe the single spot on the floor in college basketball that has the most pressure on it is the Temple point guard. And a freshman who was playing the four man in high school two years ago. Talk about transforming your game from outside, you know, making yourself a point guard. That's exactly what Collins has been able to do. There's a new look. David Hawkins, but he calmed the basketball. And a turnover for Temple, something that John Cheney's teams don't do a whole lot of and that he has never appreciated, as you can tell. Yeah, nothing gets him more upset than turnovers. The Rutgers is a team that comes in forcing a ton of turnovers. Each of their two games, 27 forced turnovers against Columbia, 20 against Carolina. This is a team that really gets up and puts pressure on the basketball. Around the arc they go against that matchup zone. The ball knocked away, and Rutgers hangs on it with 27 left on the timer. Opening moments of play. Season opener for men's college basketball here on CNA. On his out of for three. And the rebound down to the freshman Keith Butler. This is a very long athletic Temple team. Boy, do they cover a lot of ground out of the zone D. Collins can't hit the three. And a rebound down to Arizona. And rebounding a key for Rutgers, a very small team. They've gotten beaten badly on the boards in each of their first two games. There's Coleman still with the confidence intact, nailing a three-pointer. And Rutgers gets on the board first. And that's the thing, Scott. He's got a ton of confidence. Doesn't matter if he's cold, he's going to come up shooting. Off the crossover, Collins on the take. Yeah, he gets fouled on the way in. Well, a foul against Coleman. And that'll send the freshman Collins to the line. One of the things about Collins, he seems to find shots easily. A little old school. Saw him coming on a break, missed the three, but once again, the ability to put the ball to the floor. This is a guy who two years ago as a junior in high school was playing inside as a power forward. Now finds himself running the point here for Temple two years later. All public league player at Simon Gratz last year. Two years ago, a championship season in his junior year, and he misses a pair. Now Sherrod on the run in transition. Pretty ball fake, but can't get the shot to go. They got to finish that. Nice ball fake to get the defense off him. Had a wide open layup, just missed the easy one. From long range, Westby can't hit. The air ball. John Cheney's team still in a struggle right now in the first two minutes of the game to find their first point. As a team, they averaged 70 points a game last year. Uh, losing Lynn Greer, you had to find the guy who's going to end up being the go to guy offensively. And from long range, burying it is Ricky Shields. It's 6 0 Rutgers. You see the full court pressure, a little three quarter court from Rutgers, but credit Sherrod. Dribble penetration against the zone, got the wide open look from the outside. Westby. And now Robinson had it partially blocked. Hawkins got the three. How many times do you see broken plays? All of a sudden you come up with the basketball. Rutgers in transition as Lamanzana came out and got a partial block. He's out of the play. Hawkins knocks down the open three. This Temple team is certainly big and athletic enough to play the matchup, but they've got to learn the intricacies of playing that matchup zone. It's not an easy defense to play. Smart play by Lamanzana to tap it back out. And now Hawkins off the steal. One on two. Five early points for Hawkins. That's where he's so tough. So big and strong and explosive for a guard. He's able to finish around the rim, step you out beyond the three-point line. He's a guy who's got a knack for putting the ball in the basket. Coleman firing and missing again. And the fight for the rebound, won by Rutgers. Wright makes a spectacular save. And now the officials call for time as he's kind of wrapped up over on the near side scorer's table. Great hustle by Wright. Going for that loose ball right here. I'll tell you what, you're sitting on press row. It's a little scary thought, him coming at you. And that's a trimmed down version of Kareem Wright, if you can believe it. He lost 50 pounds in the offseason. He is down to 270. This was a guy who was unbelievably large, teaming with Rashad Kent. The two guys that looked like offensive linemen coming out on the floor during warm-ups the last couple of years for Rutgers. And 
back. Kent now a lineman. Uh, switched it over, playing a little football. And a foul on the inside. It's going to go on right. Push it off down low, try to get position. And the big man gets called for his first, team second. See him battling inside. Wright gets called for the push off right there. Tough call. Like both guys were battling for it. Alex Westby at 195 pounds, hanging out for dear life down there, trying to deny the basketball. And now reach in foul as Hawkins tries to take it inside. Sherrod will get hit for his first. And against the pressure defense out on the perimeter, you've got to be able to put the ball on the floor to break the defense down. Got to make Rutgers pay for overplaying out on the perimeter. Niall Murray now into the ball game at the point guard spot. Off the drive, cut off, lost the handle on it, and the basketball. Second turnover for the Owls. Transition game for the Scarlet Knights. And long range jumper, no good for Shields, but two men fighting over the same basketball. And Rutgers will get it back when we come back. That'll give the team an opportunity to get an earful from John Chaney. The timeout on the floor, 15.44 to go in the first half. Here's to begin the ball game. Third game for the Scarlet Knights, the season opener for the Temple Owls. And Temple coming off a rarity. The postseason that did not include the NCAAs. Rutgers also played in the NIT last year after their season. Lost in the first round to Yale. And neither of these teams coming into last season was expected to be in the NIT. Rutgers, nobody thought they'd have a winning record. They had a season that far exceeded expectations. And for Temple, they came into the season with high hopes coming off their regional final the year before. But they never could get everybody healthy at the same time. It was a tough season last year for Temple. Temple, they never really got things going. David Hawkins made the break on the basketball. It's knocked away, and it, Rutgers gets it back again. Hawkins missed the first five games last year, and after he got back into the lineup, Temple really started to take off. John Chaney called it a Greek tragedy. Every time it looked like they were going to get all their guys on the floor together, never happened. Traveling violation and a third turnover now for the Scarlet Knights. Well, Temple will get the ball back with an opportunity to take the lead. Look at Gary Waters, who had a terrific first season, 18 wins, including four upsets of top 25 teams, two in one week, all in the rack, a place where they played extremely well last year. Extremely well isn't even the tip of the iceberg the way they played at home last year. And now a team that emphasizes stealing the basketball does just that, but Sherrod missed on the dunk. And you can't do that if you're the point guard. A missed layup earlier from Sherrod. The dunk, he should have given the basketball up ahead of the pack, instead missed the dunk. And Hawkins draws contact in the foul. It'll go on Lamizana. All right, here, Sherrod just should have given the ball up to Shields instead, trying to finish with the dunk. Well, he went up on one, one shoe, so. Lost, lost his sneaker. Lost his coach's confidence as well. Gary Waters not happy. He's going to go to the bench and get him out of the game. It's one of those situations where after this foul shot, when the replacement comes in to get you, that's where you find his spot as far away on the bench as you can. <laughs> you know what? Doesn't matter where he goes and sits. I guarantee you, Gary Waters is going to go find him and give him an earful. He needs Sherrod to be a leader of this team. He started the last two years as their point guard. Needs better decisions from Sherrod if this team is going to get themselves back to postseason play again this season. Hawkins has all six Temple points, and we are tied here five minutes in. Dalvin Wooten, the freshman from Detroit, taking over at that point guard spot. Sharing it outside right now along with Ricky Shields. Coleman from way downtown. And another three-pointer for Coleman. He's got six. And good ball movement against the zone. Once again, getting the ball into the gutter zone. Two ways you can do it. Dribble penetration, or that time throwing the ball into the high post. Good quick reversal from Amanzana. Robinson, just behind the three-point arc. And the Scarlet Knights now into the forecourt. 
defensively, you see how long Temple is. To cover lanes, get yourself in trapping situations out on the perimeter. Robbie talking about superlatives as Alex Westby gets hit for the foul and how young this team is, the youngest team in Temple memory. I got to tell you, I've seen a lot of Temple basketball in the last uh, 15 or so years. This is the biggest Temple team that I remember in a long time. Well, that's something that worried Gary Waters coming into the game. He knew their size could be a problem. He wanted to stretch the defense, try to get them up in some full court situations. But you're right, this is a very long and athletic team too. It's not big and slow. They cover a lot of ground. Well, they do give up the rebound on the inside, and Rutgers gets a fresh shot clock now. Leading it by three with the basketball. And the pass inside for Oksani a little bit too high. Fourth turnover for the Scarlet Knights. And Temple gets the basketball back. Now, good idea. He had him posted up, sealed inside, just a bad pass. Some pressure now in the backcourt from the Scarlet Knights. And Hawk is Robinson, it's his first two points. Well, after an earlier turnover, Temple now doing a good job attacking that full court pressure. And Coleman traveling with the basketball. Well, no team in the country closes out of their zone defense better than Temple does. Here's this nice pass on the back end of the full court pressure, going to attack. Nice feet ahead by Hawkins. Put it right up, and again, big, long, athletic team right there to go get it was Robinson. Interestingly, there were times last year when Hawkins played the point guard spot. In the last three games, when Lynn Greer turned his ankle at Louisville, their last three games of the season in the NIT, Hawkins was their point guard. Did a pretty good job of it. And he'll probably see a little bit of time there this year. Yeah, I think it'll be point guard by committee this year for John Chaney. That's something that he's not used to. Abizana. Westby did a great job of changing his shot. Now Shields. And he's fouled on the inside by Glenn Elliott on the way into the lane. Elliott picks up his first and the team's second. Nice defense right here, just holding his ground. Not coming down and committing the foul. Off balance shot right there by Lamanzana. Shields, a little bit short. Aksani, hard to the glass, but he pushed off on Westby for the position. And he'll get hit for his first foul. John Chaney working over there, trying to make sure his team does a good job defensively. Rebounding the basketball. Contact down low. Aksani had his arm in the back of Westby's lower back. Called for the push off. Davis checks in, and Shields will take a seat on the Rutgers bench. You see the team fouls here early in a one-point game. <laughs> Collins, nowhere to go. Westby feeding the post. Elliott got a man up on his back and couldn't get the shot to fall. Lamazana is going to get called for the foul. That'll be his second. Good move inside by Glenn Elliott, the sophomore out of Florida. A real nice post up right there. You see him seal, get Lamazana on his back. The ball fake, fights through the contact, nearly able to finish the play, but it all started with the great seal on the post up. There's a young man who took very few shots in 28 games in his freshman year as Kareem Wright returns. But Elliott hits seven out of the 11 shots that he took for the season. And a guy who's really just starting to come on, was very raw last year, especially offensively. Had 10 in their first exhibition game of the year. And he's got two here. Now the Temple Owls take the lead. Here comes the matchup zone, stretching out, looking for a trap or a steal. They nearly got it. And a traveling violation as Coleman slid along the floor after pulling the basketball back in. That's a turnover once again against Rutgers, the sixth so far. See right here, nice pick defensively. It all starts with Robinson on the basketball. Ian Collins doing a great job out front. The poke away by Collins to force the wall. And Collins lost the basketball, but held on. 
struck out. Hawkins from way outside, missing on the shot from right in front of the Rutgers bench. I mean, he and Coleman talk about range from those two guys, huh? Unlimited range. Rutgers having a lot of trouble penetrating inside against this matchup zone. Get uncomfortable with some of those passes. Right a little bit strong, but Oksani right there for the tip man. Oksani, just a guy who battles and works inside, coming off a good game against Carolina with eight points. Rutgers lost that game to the youngest North Carolina team really ever. Yeah, starting three freshmen, two sophomores playing big minute. You see more and more of that in college basketball, though, with guys leaving early for the NBA. Teams are getting younger and younger. Temple try to settle it down now and retake the lead. And Robinson gets it for them. Antoine Robinson now has five. That's something Robinson didn't do very much of last year in high school, playing at Oak Hill. He was the fifth offensive uh, option on that team, team that finished third in the country. Right, big power inside from Kareem Wright. Yeah, good finish with his left as well. He's so big, if you get him the ball on the low post, guys aren't going to be able to get around him. Mistake thinking Hawkins was there, but he was not. Five early turnovers, and it leads to an easy two for Rutgers. Now, good pass ahead by Wooten, the young freshman, presence of mind to not worry about just handling the basketball. Got his head up and found the wide open man. Just getting to the point of getting ready to see where these freshmen aren't playing like freshmen, and that mistake leads to an easy two. Well, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have times where young guys are going to look terrific, and other times where you're going to be scratching your head. And the ball will belong to Rutgers when we come back. Sean Oksani, part of the group that's hitting the boards hard here early on in the Rutgers Scarlet Knights with a two-point lead. 13, Rutgers on top. Just about halfway through the first half of play here at the Leah Corps Center in Philadelphia. This Rutgers team we mentioned last year going to the NIT under Gary Waters. And looking back at Rutgers history, you get an idea of just how good Gary Waters was as a first-year coach last year. Talk about a turnaround. The year before, they were 5-13 and 13 in the Big East, getting 18 wins, got themselves into the first round of the NIT. 15 of those wins at the rack were literally, they had a stretch in the end of January, beginning of February, they were playing as well as any home team in the country. That has become a major, major home court advantage. This Rutgers team, they are playing a whole lot at home early. They do have their next game at home against Marshall, but then on the road again against Auburn. And a home game against Fordham over the course of the next couple weeks. That was one of his goals coming into last year is to make them a very strong team at home. They accomplished it. This year, one of his goals is for his team to start winning on the road, just two and eight last year on the road. Ironically, two blowout wins against LaSalle and West Virginia, their only wins away from the rack. Shot clock winding down, as you can see, on your screen up near the top. Sherrod's got to let it go and does, and just got it onto the rim to avoid the violation. You see the Achilles heel of Mike Sherrod's game. Not a very good outside shooter. Here's Hawkins. They're staying with him in a big way. And a miss by the freshman Butler. Butler, seven feet tall. And a guy who's going to learn and grow in that center position here at Temple. A spot that was held down the last several years by Kevin Lyde. That's why he was such an important recruit last year for Temple. Big battle over Cincinnati in the recruiting war for Butler. And a push-off foul against Kareem Wright. On the loose ball is second. That's going to put Rutgers up over the limit now with 8.36 to go here in the first half. Once again, good post defense there by Butler getting a hand on it. Wright's got two fouls, both of them on loose ball situation, one on a post up, the second trying to go for the loose ball. So now Niall Murray takes to the line, an opportunity to shoot the one and one. And off 
the miss. Oksani the rebound. Now Murray, another opportunity. And Hawkins, the guy that kept it alive, active on the offensive board. Oh, Collins isn't shy for a freshman. And Hawkins gets another rebound. Nice move to the baseline for David Hawkins. Just a matter of size and strength once again for that guard position. Not going to find many guys that can match up physically with his strength inside. Wiggins on the move to the lane, and he gets fouled on the way in. That'll get him an opportunity to shoot here as a freshman Butler picks up the foul. Tie game here through just about 12 minutes of play. Wiggins is sophomore out of the Bronx. Played in all 31 games last year. Coming off the bench for Gary Waters. And he breaks the tie, putting Rutgers back in front. Most of those appearances as a backup to Mike Sherrod at the point guard spot. Guy who in high school was a prolific scorer. New York City High School basketball. Different role, though, now playing a point guard spot. Well, many players adjust to different roles after leaving high school. They were the primary and sole focus of their team. Collins gets fouled on the way around to the baseline. Adrian Hill, the freshman, picks up the foul. Now, last time Temple had the basketball, watch Hawkins. And again, just using his strength right here, backing him down, taking advantage of the mismatch in size against Sherrod. Guy who can finish around the basket as well as any guard in the country. So here is Collins. And Temple continues to struggle for the free throw line. He shot 69% from the line last year, but they are in a serious struggle here in the early going of the first half. Two out of eight. Those are Rutgers type numbers. Rutgers last in the Big East last year. Once again, shooting it at under 60% from the foul line this year. Gerard, there's his game right there. The pretty moves to the inside. I'll tell you what, you're in a danger zone trying to dribble your way through this matchup zone, but if you're quick, like Sherrod is, sometimes you can get away with it. Yeah, and once you get in there, though, you've got to finish. He's missed a layup, a dunk, a nice easy runner inside. You've got to take advantage of that quickness by finishing play. Just getting there is not good enough. There's more than a number of Atlantic 10 teams over the years that can tell you that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And foul is on Cortez Davis. Freshman picks up his first. That is the ninth team foul. So next one, and Temple will be shooting two the rest of the half. What the zone defense does is it forces guys sometimes to take shots that a coach doesn't want them to take. One of the reasons why they've been so successful with that matchup zone defense. Gary Waters knows that his team's got to make some shots early over top of that zone, or all of a sudden they just start packing it in and it becomes even harder to score. He's now 0 for 4 as Collins from the line, and as a team, the Owls are 2 out of 9 here in the first half. A lot of opportunities left 15 feet away. Rutgers trying to show patience against the matchup zone, trying to avoid getting into those spots and pockets along the side where you'll get trapped. Shot clock now down to 10. Collins now running the point of that zone defense with Robinson on the bench. Rod had the look, couldn't hit the fader. And Butler the rebound. Here's Collins now, some transition basketball. Nice spin. Too strong though with the shot. And Holly Smith mistimed his jump on the attempted putback. Great play by Niall Murray. A great defense and recovery to go up and challenge the dunk. Trying to bracket that defensive play. Now back down the other end, but Hawkins walked with the basketball. Six turnover for the Owls. And that will bring us to a timeout on the floor. John Chaney, a little unhappy with what he has seen here in this first half. His team down by a bucket. Okay, I went to my eye doctor for a checkup. He's great but the cost of contact lenses was out of control. 
defense, not here in the half court in the zone, but great transition defense by Niall Murray. What a great play, great hustle to get back into the play. The running jump times it perfectly. Adrian Hill thinks he's got a wide open dunk, and out of nowhere comes Murray. Big time defensive play. It is so tough to make that play defensively without committing a foul, and the timing was perfect for Niall Murray. He was a guy who had his breakout game last year at Fordham, an incredible ball game as he jumped onto the scene as a freshman. Did get some pretty heavy minutes throughout the rest of the year for this Temple team. He's a guy who's kind of growing into and finding a role right now. And that really is true of a lot of these Temple players, with the exception of Hawkins and Westby. Oh, you're right. And this is a guy who they hoped would become a point guard. But as time has gone on, they've seen that he's probably better without the basketball in his hands. That breakout game you were talking about, 33 against Ford. Inside, the missing Butler the rebound. On Hill with an easy bucket inside. You think he's worrying about the block dunk before? Didn't go up strong and came up short. Chris Gaither, a freshman out of Kentucky. In the ball game now for the Owls. Here's Hawkins from 22. 11 first half points for David Hawkins. And that's hard to guard because you just don't expect him to raise up and knock the shot down from that deep. He's a guy who's always been kind of a streaky shooter. And when he gets going like that, he goes. I mean, he just steps back, creates a little space between he and the defender. You think he's going to reverse the ball. Instead, he knocks down a 23-foot jumper. game as we come up on the five minute mark left here in the first half. Uh, great defense right there by the zone. All of a sudden Coleman picks up his dribble and everybody gets out into passing lanes. Instead of worrying about the basketball, they get out and don't allow him to reverse the basketball at all. Go, let's go, let's go. Coach still has the jacket on. It's pretty good 15 minutes into the game. Wouldn't ask for it for much longer though. Coleman Hit not another three. He's got 11 first half points. And again, every time they're in the zone, you cannot lose sight of Coleman. He misses a couple shots. Doesn't matter. He's going to come back firing. Hawkins lost his footing. And ultimately, the ball is going to stay Temple's way with 21 left on the timer. Alex Westby makes his return to the game for another season, and they expect big things from Westby as he replaces Niall Murray. And Temple's played a lot of guys here in the first half. Remember, Mick talked about the fact that Polk's still unavailable yet. Adds even more depth and some more scoring off the bench. Last year's Atlantic 10, sixth man of the year. Hawkins lost the ball off the steal. Here comes Coleman. Nice play by Coleman to get it up on the glass. Good body control. And he's got 13 here in the first half. And good concentration as well as Gaither tried to run through him and bother the shot. Coleman stayed right with it. By four. Look at their pressure on the basketball. Really getting out, trying to keep the ball out of Hawkins' hands. Gerard, terrific play. And now trying to lead the break. He'll be fouled by Gaither as he comes into the open court. That'll be his first foul, and team foul number four for the Owls. So Rutgers will get the basketball back when we come back. Time out on the floor, Gary Waters' team showing they can transition defense over into offense. Precisely what they just did moments ago. They have forged themselves out to a lead now, up by four with under four minutes to play in the first half. To get the most out of life. Here's a McGonagall Hall, and here at the Leah Chorus Center, you look at the fiber of Temple basketball. It's all about their Hall of Famer, John Cheney. In his 21st year now at the helm, inducted into the Hall of Fame in October of last year. 450 career wins at Temple, 675 coaching wins. And he's unbelievable. 30-year career. Now his numbers are amazing. Postseason play, 19 straight years, NCAA tournament, 12 or 17 out of those 19, including 12 straight up until last year. Program that never went to back-to-back -to -back NCAA tournaments. He strung 12 together. It has been an incredible run for Cheney here. And Temple generally as a team that is going to help dominate the Atlantic 10. Be right there in terms of the Big Five. And then most importantly, he's going to scare the daylights out of somebody oh, yeah. a couple weekends in March at the tournament. Five trips to the regional finals here at 
Temple. Done it in the 80s, 90s, and in the decade of the 2000s. Wooten hits on a little runner, though, and Rutgers is on top now by six. First two of the game for freshman Calvin Wooten. Wooten gives him a little bit of a different look than Sherrod, more of an offensive scoring threat. Led the Detroit Public League last year in scoring at nearly 27 a game. So he's a point guard who can score. Here's Hawkins. Had a little bit of room, couldn't pull the trigger. Butler. Thanks to that size inside. Couldn't get it to fall, though. And the ball belongs to Rutgers. A nice step through, showed the ball. He's got a lot of promise. Remember, just a freshman. Always takes big guys a little longer to develop. But you're working with a lot right there, not just seven feet. He's got some offensive skills to go with it as well. Well, Scarlet Knights in a 7-0 run right now, trying to expand the six-point lead. Shields apparently got tripped. According to Mike Kitts, the official down underneath the basket. And Hawkins going to get called for the trip, his second foul. Once again, trying to get themselves into the gut of that zone defense. Never easy as Shields goes to the floor. They call the trip on Hawkins outside. But if you're going to score against this zone, you've got to find a way to get it inside. Whether it's dribble penetration or throwing the ball into the high post, you've got to get it into the gut. Shields a miss, but Rutgers keeps. And Coleman has been deadly in the first half. Can't hit on his shot. That would have been a big one right there. And again, the ball was inside. Even though it's an offensive rebound and kick out, the zone defense collapses inside. That's when you're going to get open looks. Pace of the game right now. Clearly favoring Temple, but they're going to have to hit some shots, and Robinson does. And again, stepping up. Pretty good-looking shot right there from a guy who didn't shoot the ball much in high school. Talking to the assistant coaches, Nate Blackwell and Dan Leibowitz, they said everything's new to him because last year he really didn't get an opportunity to do much offensively in high school. Turnover, ball off the hands of Hill. That's eight turnovers here in the first half for Rutgers. And John Chaney's going to take a timeout here with a minute 51 to go till halftime. And his team down by four. Uh, Gary Waters, former head coach at Kent State, kind of caught the eye of top brass at Rutgers, beating Rutgers in the first round of the NIT a couple of years back. Coming up at halftime, visit with Alex Westby, Bill Bradshaw, Temple Athletic Director, first half highlights and stats. All of that with Mick Mottinghoff standing by here at halftime at the Leah Chorus Center. And a minute 51 from now on the clock. Talking about the Rutgers schedule and what they've got coming up. Kind of round figures. Temple, as always, going to play one of the toughest that you're going to find. No, but this is ridiculous. Huh? How about a trip to Carolina? Three games in four days at Wake, at South Carolina in their new building, at Charlotte. They don't play at home again until December 28th. That run right there of three games in four days, that's like an exhibition team. It's not like they're going down and playing patsies. Three tough opponents on the road. This team's going to get real mature real quick. They'll bury them where they fall. Well, last year's schedule came back to bite them a little bit, starting off 6 and 12. Murray had one foot on the line as he sinks that jump shot for his first two. And the Owls back within a bucket now. And Gary Waters wants a timeout. Interesting, Rutgers was playing in the preseason NIT, and they were playing with a couple of experimental rules. you got to wonder if that had any kind of effect on them. I tell you, look, look at the upcoming schedule. We told you games against Marshall at Auburn, Fordham. They'll have Princeton at Jadwin Gym here on CNA, and then against Virginia. They played those games with the slightly longer three-point line and the wider lane. Yeah, two rules that I think have a chance to get into college basketball. The wider lane cleans things up inside a little bit and extending the three-point line out about another nine inches. I saw it in the preseason NIT. They've got good semifinal games coming up at the Garden as well. But two rules that I think you could see in play here in the next few years. Hey, look at Rutgers losing to North Carolina. We're taking an awful lot out of them to be playing this game here and then turn around and get involved in the semifinals of the preseason NIT right back off this. 
they could have taken it, though. <laughs> they clearly would have taken the trip to the Garden. <laughs> Champ for defense now. Rutgers by two with the ball. And off the miss, Shields punched it out of bounds, so Temple will get it back again with a chance to tie or take the lead as we get set to cross the one-minute mark left here in the half. Wesby coming out and challenging Coleman, making sure that he has a hand in the face. Again, they close out of the zone defense better than any team in the country. Every time a shot goes up, somebody's flying at you. This been too involved offensively there, trying to force one inside, and Elliott had it poked away. Temple averages 10 turnovers a game last year. They have eight here in the first half. You see this zone with Robinson out on the point. Boy, does he cover a lot of ground or what? And that is an imposing threat out there against the point guard trying to reverse the basketball. Coleman got fouled from three-point range. That is a big mistake by Niall Murray as Coleman's got a chance for a rare four-point play. Well, he came underneath him, undercut him right here. He comes, he tries to turn around and box him out while he's still in the shot. Coleman's an explosive shooter, really gets off the floor, has great lift. Very strong, and again, with that deep range, he is tough to guard. He really stretches the zone. Off a tough game at North Carolina, he's got 17 of his 28 points, of his team's 28 points here in the first half. But if you ask Gary Waters before the game, hey, you know what, Coleman's gonna shoot two for 18. You figure you're out of the game. They were very much in that game. One guy stepped up. Collins. They were thinking about holding for one, but the Red Sea, if you'll pardon the pun, parted for him. Yeah, wide open lane, takes it strong, finishes with the dunk. Winding it down now here in the half. They want Coleman to take the shot if he can. Sherrod's got a little time to work with. Oh. Got it to the foul line. Oh, my. What a move to end the half for Sherrod. Never panic, never blink. Got himself to a 15-footer with a pretty dribble penetration. And Rutgers takes a six-point lead in the dressing room. Well, he put the ball between his legs, coming from behind to in front, something you never want to do, putting the ball in front of the defense, but the zone spread themselves out, got himself into the lane, a shot he missed a couple times earlier. Not so this time, knocked it down. Let's take it down now to Mick Bonninghoff, Mick. All right, thanks very much, Scott Graham. Gary Waters, your defense really doing it in the first half. Temple doesn't usually turn the ball over that much in the first half. You were able to cause some turnovers. Yeah, well, that's what we do. We, we apply pressure and we cause turnovers. And if we're doing that, we're playing Rutgers basketball. The other thing you were doing effectively, offensively, was after you pick up the ball, the transition offense was really working well. Well, that's what we do also. And we got to get into that. But their defense is strong, too. We're talking about ours, but they're keeping us way outside. We got to find a way to penetrate that defense. Defense. Anything else you need to accomplish? Uh, well, you've got a lot to accomplish. This game has got a long way to go. All right, Coach. Thanks very much. Thank you. Gary Waters, head coach of the Scarlet Knights. Let's send it back to Scott Graham. All right. Thank you, Mick. First half ends not with a whimper, but with a bang. Or more characteristically, a jam and a highlight field play from Mike Sherrod to close it out. Six-point Rutgers lead at halftime. Back with more at the Leah Chorus Center right after this. Team to lead the way for the Scarlet Knights. Hawkins with 11. Robinson with 7 in his debut for the Temple Owls here. And you've got yourself a, a tight ball game so far. Once you've seen Rutgers take advantage of opportunities and Temple not take advantage of its opportunities. One half of basketball still left to go. Second half still to come for David Hawkins of the Temple Owls trailing Rutgers by 6.